So with the holiday season rapidly approaching, I imagine there's quite a few people who are either thinking about upgrading their current system or building a new one from scratch. But choosing the parts for your new gaming PC can be a bit overwhelming with all of the options available, so I thought it would be a good idea to put together a couple of builds that I would personally do if I was in the market for a new PC. I'll actually be showing how to do two different builds, a budget gaming build that will give you the best bang for the buck, and a premium gaming build that will give you cutting edge performance, but without breaking the bank. All the parts I'll be showing today are available on Amazon, and I'll be including affiliate links for them in the video description. So if you appreciate this build guide and want to help the channel out, then be sure to use my affiliate links. And of course with Black Friday and other holiday sales, there might be some better deals at other retailers, especially if you live near a micro center which by far has the best bundle deals. But either way, this video should still be very useful in helping you choose which parts to buy. Alright, so let's get into it and start with the budget build. The CPU I've chosen is the Ryzen 7600, which is currently selling for under $200. When comparing AMD's non-X3D models, it turns out the newer Ryzen 9000 series isn't that much better than the older 7000 series. So if you're on a budget, you're better off getting the older generation. The 7600 offers very respectable gaming performance and can keep up with the more expensive CPUs. Now as far as motherboards go, the Gigabyte B650 Eagle AX is an extremely high quality B650 board, and I actually wasn't planning to pick this one at first because it seems a bit overkill for a budget build, but when you compare it to some of the cheapest full-sized ATX boards, those actually aren't that much cheaper in price, so I think it's worth paying the extra 10 or $20 for a truly high quality board. And since this is the latest AM5 socket, that means you'll have an upgrade path if you ever decide to upgrade to a more powerful CPU in the future. This board has surprisingly good VRMs, which makes it suitable for high-end 12 and 16 core CPUs, so it'll have zero problems if you ever decide to upgrade. Now when it comes to the CPU cooler, it turns out the 7600 already comes with one. The stock cooler isn't great, but it's definitely adequate for a 6-core CPU. But if you want lower fan noise, then you'll want to upgrade the cooler. I recommend the Thermalrite Phantom Spirit 120, which is a great deal at only $36. This is a dual tower, dual fan cooler that boasts an impressive 7 heat pipes, and it can compete with the much more expensive air coolers. This would actually be good enough for even a 12 or 16 core CPU, so it'll have absolutely no problems cooling this one. Now while CPU coolers do come with thermal paste, these usually aren't the best quality, so you might want to purchase a better paste. There's many good options, but personally I use Noctua NTH2 paste, which offers excellent performance while also being very affordable. Now when it comes to the RAM, I decided to go with the G-Skill Flare X5 series 32GB kit, which is currently selling for only 83 bucks. These sticks are rated for 6000 MHz, which is the sweet spot for Zen 4 CPUs. Also, 32GB is plenty for gaming, and will guarantee smooth performance for many years to come. Now as far as SSDs go, I think it's best to go with at least 1TB for the boot drive. B650 motherboards have three NVMe slots, so if you need more storage in the future then you can easily add more drives later. I decided to go with the Silicon Power UD90 which is a Gen 4 drive that offers great performance and is currently on sale for only 53 bucks. Even though there are cheaper options available, I think it's worth spending the extra money for this one since it comes with TLC flash, as opposed to QLC which is common on budget drives. Not only is TLC faster, but it also has much better endurance, so it's worth it in the long run. But keep in mind that the larger capacities of this particular model apparently come with QLC flash, while the 1TB and smaller versions come with TLC. Alright, so now let's talk about GPUs. 
When it comes to budget builds and getting the best bang for your buck on a sub $500 GPU, I think AMD is the better choice over NVIDIA. That's why I've chosen the RX 7800 XT, which is a surprisingly powerful GPU and is a great choice for high frame rate 1440p gaming on the latest titles. The specific model I've chosen is the XFX Speedster Quick 319, which is about $20 cheaper than most of the other models right now. Now for the power supply, I recommend getting the EVGA 750BP. This model has an 80 plus bronze power efficiency rating, which is typical for budget supplies. But something to keep in mind is that this model isn't modular which means you might need to spend a bit more time with cable management. But again, this is typical for budget power supplies. If you want a modular supply, then you'll need to spend extra for that. And last but not least is the case. The Montec Air 903 Max is an incredibly good budget case that doesn't cut back on features. And this one currently costs $70. It includes three front intake RGB fans and one rear fan, which is a nice surprise. Many of the more expensive cases that can cost $100 or more only include two fans, while this one includes four. Other than that, it includes all the other features you'd expect in a good case and is easy to work with. Now another option that I recommend and personally own myself is the Be Quiet Pure Base 500. This one doesn't have a glass side panel which gives it a very clean and sleek look, and is more sturdy since you don't need to worry about accidentally breaking the glass side panel. However, this case only comes with two fans so I recommend buying another front intake fan to ensure positive air pressure in the case. Now the grand total for this budget build comes out to a little over a thousand dollars, which is considerably lower than the premium build that I'll be showing here in a second. Like I said, the Ryzen 7600 and the RX 7800 XT are very powerful components, which will offer plenty of performance for years to come. So if you're on a budget, this build will offer the best bang for the buck in my opinion. So now let's move on to the premium gaming build. Even though this is a premium build, I still placed an emphasis on value and getting the best bang for your buck. This one has the brand new Ryzen 9800 X3D, which is currently the fastest gaming CPU and has an MSRP of $480. However, this CPU was just barely released the other day and at the time of recording this, it doesn't appear to be available on Amazon yet. Also, the demand for this CPU is extremely high, so it's hard to tell how good availability will be in the coming weeks and months. If you're not able to find one in stock and need a CPU ASAP, then the previous generation 7800X3D is still one of the best gaming CPUs, so this is another good option as well. Now when it comes to motherboards, AMD recently released the new X870E and X870 boards which do offer a few improvements including better memory overclocking and USB 4.0 as a standard feature. But other than that, there's no real compelling reasons to purchase the newer boards which generally have a higher price tag. Keep in mind there are some minor differences in the number of usable PCIe lanes across the various tiers of motherboards, but this shouldn't be a concern for most gamers. If you do productivity and deal with lots of storage, then this might be more of a concern, in which case you should take a look at this chart here. Now with that said, even though the new X870 boards generally are more expensive, this ASRock X870 board is an exception and is a great value at only 200 bucks, which puts it in the same price range as most of the older X670 boards. Now when it comes to the CPU cooler, I actually recommend the same one as I did for the budget build. I don't recommend getting an AIO unless you have an extremely power hungry CPU, which could actually benefit from the better cooling. Not only are the good AIOs much more expensive, but there's also the possibility that the pump will go bad, or even worse, getting a leak which can ruin your system. These things are rare, but they can happen. 
That's why I'm a fan of large air coolers. They're more reliable and will last longer than AIOs. And like I suggested for the budget build, I recommend purchasing Noctua NTH2 Thermal Paste, which gives excellent performance at an affordable price. Now as far as RAM goes, although the new X870 boards do support up to 8000 MHz memory speeds, the sweet spot for Zen 5 is actually between 6000 and 6400 MHz, since this allows you to run the Infinity Fabric sync to the memory clock, which gives better latency. Also, RAM speeds aren't as important for the X3D chips because the extra cache makes up for it. So that's why I've chosen an affordable kit that runs at 6000 MHz but offers better timings than the kit I recommended for the budget build. The Team Group T-Create Expert Overclocking 10L can be purchased for less than $90 and offers better timings than other kits in this price range. It's also advertised as being AMD Expo compatible, so it should be plug and play on the AM5 platform without any extra fussing around in the BIOS. Now if you want to be extra future proofed, you might want to consider getting a 48GB kit. However, it's hard to say whether it will be worth it or not. If you're just gaming, then I think 32 gigs will be plenty for many years to come. Now let's talk about SSDs. While AM5 does support the latest Gen 5 drives, these are much more expensive and you likely won't notice a difference in games. That's why I suggest getting a premium Gen 4 drive instead. The Samsung 990 Pro is an excellent choice, and so is the Western Digital SN850X. But if you want to save some money and still get the same level of performance, then I recommend getting the SK Hynix Platinum P41. Now as far as capacity goes, I think at least 2 terabytes is a good place to start. But of course, most of these drives also come in larger variants as well. Keep in mind that the motherboards I showed come with 3 NVMe slots, so you can easily add more storage later down the road if you need to. Alright, so now let's talk about GPUs, and I'll actually be going over several different options depending on your price range. If you want the absolute best performance, then there's only one option, the RTX 4090. However, the problem is that Nvidia has stopped producing these, and they can only be found for inflated prices now. So you can expect to spend at least $2000 for one of these. Also, you might be better off waiting for the RTX 5090, which is expected to be released in early 2025. But let's say you don't want to spend that much on a GPU, and you have a budget of around 1000. If you're set on getting Nvidia, then the 4080 Super is a good choice. Some models run more than 1200 bucks, but you can still find some good ones for 1K, such as this MSI model or this Gigabyte model. Now if you're looking to save some money, then I suggest going with an AMD GPU. The RX 7900 XTX can be found for as little as $850 these days from respected brands such as Sapphire and PowerColor. But if you want the best bang for the buck while still getting a premium gaming experience, then you should consider stepping down to the 7900 XT, which can be found for as little as $650 now. Keep in mind that AMD is also planning to release their next generation GPUs early next year. However, it's been reported that these new GPUs will be around the same performance as their current top tier GPUs, but will have a more affordable MSRP and will likely be more power efficient. But the GPUs I just showed are already heavily discounted from their original MSRP. So it's hard to say whether it's worth waiting for the new generation or not. I don't think you can go wrong either way. Now when it comes to the power supply, I recommend getting a high quality 850 watt supply, which is more than enough for the GPUs I just mentioned. Except for maybe the RTX 4090. It says the minimum recommended supply is actually 850 watts, so in this case you might be okay with the 850 watt supply, but it's generally recommended to step up to a 1000 watt supply minimum. 
Now the two brands I recommend for power supplies are either Sea Sonic or Superflower, which are both highly respected brands. But right now, the best deal appears to be the Superflower LEDX6 Platinum Pro, which has Platinum Efficiency Power Rating and is currently on sale for only $110, which is a great deal. It also comes with an industry-leading 10-year warranty, so you can be rest assured this is a top quality component. The power supply is definitely something you don't want to skimp out on. And finally, for this build's case, I actually suggest going with one of the cases I suggested in the budget build, since they're both very solid cases. You could easily spend more than double the price for a higher end case, but unless you really need the niche features that they offer, I don't think they're worth it. Now the final cost for this enthusiast system will depend on the GPU you decide to get. If you go with the 7900 XTX, then you can expect to spend just a little over 2 grand for the entire system, which is pretty good all things considered. But of course you can cut $200 from this price by settling for the 7900 XT, which is probably the better value overall. But either way, no matter which GPU you choose, I think the other parts I suggested will definitely give you the best bang for the buck. And like I mentioned earlier, I've included affiliate links in the video description for all the products I showed, so if you found this video to be helpful then you can show your support by using these links. Thanks in advance. I was also planning to include a build that's geared towards productivity and content creation, but decided to cut it short and just focus on gaming builds today. But if you'd like to see a follow-up video with a productivity build, then drop a comment and let me know. And if you have any thoughts or questions about the builds I showed today, then feel free to drop a comment as well. Also be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.